I don't know if that's new. It's new to me and I'm the main character of my story. So like, that's all that matters. <laughs> Hello! So today we're gonna be doing a makeup look with only Clean Beauty. Now Clean Beauty can kind of be tricky because there's no official set of rules that constitutes a makeup product that's clean. Let me hit you with some knowledge. There is essentially no regulation on ingredients that can go in cosmetic products in the US. Please don't have a heart attack. That's obviously super concerning because your skin is an organ. Your skin is actually the largest organ in science. And so it absorbs whatever you're putting on it. It's really important that you are aware of the ingredients that are in the products that you're putting on your skin on a daily basis. Lack of regulation or laws also means that companies can market themselves as clean or green and have nothing to show for it, which is really sad because to the average person, they don't know the difference and they think that they're buying clean when they're not. Let's first define clean beauty. For me personally, this means non-toxic products that are usually formulated without parabens, phthalates, sulfates, silicones, or synthetic fragrances. <laughs> Try to say that 10 times fast. I also care about how it scores on the EWG. If you don't know, the EWG, that acronym stands for the Environmental Working Group, and they are essentially a nonprofit organization that provides research on toxic ingredients in household products. That's a really good resource if you want more information on ingredients that could be harmful to your health that are in some of the things that you use on a daily basis. It's always good to be educated about what you're putting in your body. I feel like I'm really preaching clean beauty when I don't always use all clean beauty products. And I want to disclose that this doesn't mean that I only use non-GMO organic me 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 makeup. No, I still use makeup that probably has chemicals in it that I don't want to be putting on my body but for me I think it's all about exposure and if I'm more often than not exposing myself to cleaner ingredients I can sleep fine at night. So all of the products that I'm using today scored low on the EWG. It's like a scale. They all scored below five which means fair and none of them had super harmful ingredients. There was one product that had a bit of fragrance and so that scores really high because it can cause irritation and for some of the products that had limited data I just ran my own reports on the ingredients and none of them had toxic ingredients that raised any red flags. Oh my god, I'm done blabbing. Let's get into the makeup already. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. That'd be great. What? To start out, I have prepped my skin with the Weleda Skin Food. This is the light version. There's a rich and a light. And you need like the tiniest little bit of this. This is clean as well, just to keep in the theme. So I'm gonna start off with this Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. This is actually a little bit too dark for me because I used to use it over the summer, hence the chunky turtle deck. So I'm just gonna kind of bring it down my neck a bit more and hopefully it'll work out. I would say the best way to apply this foundation is definitely with a sponge. So I have a beauty blender. Even though I was talking mad about the beauty blender like literally the last two videos, I do own one and I do use one. So I guess that makes me a hypocrite. Also, if you're in the market for this foundation, it does have like a scent. I don't even know. It's like an oil maybe? Like, I can't even put my finger on like what exactly it smells like, but it is really, really nice. I feel like this is the best foundation I know. Ooh. <laughs> Why would I blend my neck and talk at the same time? <laughs> this is so stupid. Guys, I like, uh. <laughs> like, what the okay, okay. Just like, pause one moment while I do my neck. As I was saying, this is the best foundation I've found as far as like clean beauty that's actually like a real foundation and not, what's the word to describe other natural foundations? Kind of bullshit. Yeah, is that the one? Okay, yeah. They're like powders that claim their foundation. It's like, I need coverage, okay? I don't have perfect skin. So this actually gives you like some coverage and lasts a long time and makes your skin look good. Next I'm using the Pacifica Natural Minerals Liquid Cover Full Coverage Lasting Concealer. Oh my gosh, why do all these companies have the longest names in the history of the world? This actually had the highest score out of 
everything I'm using because it technically has fragrance. It's listed as like literally the last ingredient and in parentheses it says natural. I'm thinking it's fine, but yeah, the fragrance aspect made it score higher than everything else. This is actually a really nice concealer for like drugstore. Not even drugstore, just in general. It's just like light and it blends really nicely. Like you don't really have to do too much to it, but I've realized how Whoa, sorry. <laughs> I realized how used to full coverage concealers I've gotten because first of all, I couldn't get over how small this was because I'm used to such a huge doe foot like the Tarte Shape Tape or Too Faced Born this way. And also that it's not super, super, super full coverage. It is just like a nice light layer but it does blend out really nicely with a sponge. I haven't used a brush with it, so it could be kind of different with that. Oh, I should put more on my eyeballs. What am I doing? It actually, if I can compare it to a high end, which I'm going to, so sue me. It reminds me of the Becca Aqua. Aqua Luminous, I think it's called, which I actually tried that out and returned it because it was like water. Like I know it's Aqua Luminous or whatever, but it was so thin I felt like it just did nothing and it kind of flaked off. Like it was just, it was very strange. See that foundation is pretty full coverage for a like serum foundation. I don't really feel like I need to spot conceal. Actually, that was such a lie. I do need to spot conceal. Cool, 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 cool. Next time I'm using a little tiny bit of this RMS Beauty Contour Bronze. This is kind of too dark for me, but we're just gonna use like a little, little bit and blend it out really, really well. Just to add like the tiniest little definition to give the illusion that I have cheekbones, you know? Oh, what I was gonna mention about the serum is that I actually watched Camila Mendez from Riverdale do her like Vogue, what is that called, Beauty Secrets? And she was using the Ilia foundation. I thought that was pretty cool because I feel like I hadn't heard of it a lot before that. See how it just goes like a little bit? I'm also gonna do my nose because obviously. All right, and I'm actually gonna use this again for my eyeballs, but I'm gonna use my finger. Oh, that's why I didn't wanna put concealer on my eyes. I don't know what I would, whatever. <laughs> this is just like today, guys. I just wanna focus it on the outer portion. Okay, I'm just gonna like wipe that concealer. This is a really professional look, you know? That looks a little scary. Let me use this brush again and just blend that out a little bit. It's hard because it's cream, so like you just have to be patient. But at the same time, I really do enjoy creams because you can really sheer them out or build them up. I guess I'm trying to say with creams that they can just look like your eyelid is naturally defined. I need to clean up this a lot. Oh my God. This is looking a little ratchet. I haven't used that word in such a long time. Whatever happened to that, eh? Then I'm gonna use the, again, RMS Beauty Lip to Cheek in the shade Modest. I'm using a lot of RMS Beauty. I was planning on using more Glossier because I guess I was the dummy who thought Glossier was clean, but turns out it's not. It's just, I don't think it's even marketed to be clean. It's just marketed to be minimalist, which I kind of think are one and the same. Anyways, after some research, I realized that Glossier is not clean. The CEO, Emily Weiss, who side note is that really annoying girl who knew way too much about flowers on the hills. If you know, you know. But anyways, she said that she cares more about how the product functions than the actual ingredients in the product. And she did mention something about how, sorry, I need to actually apply makeup. <laughs> Multitasking. She just mentioned that just because a product has chemicals in it doesn't mean it's bad, which I agree with. But I just thought that was strange that Glossier seems to be super minimalist but it's actually not like a clean brand just something to think about this is kind of like I feel like for fall colors I like to go a little bit darker with my blush this is a bit light for me right now it is like a really flattering shade I think and I really like the kind of flushed look that it gives your cheeks Highlighter. Again, I'm using the RMS Beauty Eye Polish in the shade Lunar. If you watch my everyday makeup 
literally the first video on my channel. You would know that I use this as a highlighter even though it's an eye polish because I own the Living Luminizer. It's right here. You can even see that this is, wait, can you see? This is the Living Luminizer and this is the eye polish. So just a bit more of a champagne color than the Living Luminizer is like pretty white. And the Living Luminizer, honestly, just like it's very glossy and I feel like at least my highlight, I want it to pop a little bit more. I would say I prefer this. And then we are gonna put it in the eyes because it is technically what it's used for. This will crease kind of regardless. I do set it with a little bit of powder, but it's kind of the nature of the beast. <laughs> to set my face, I'm using the Cover Effects Perfect Setting Powder. This is technically considered clean on the Sephora website. I know they don't have the strictest standards, but I'm gonna count it. It's free of a lot of stuff, especially with powder. Usually there's talc in powder and talc can sometimes be contaminated with asbestos, which can lead to like a slew of cancers and diseases. Like if it's inhaled, you can get um, lung cancer. Anyways, bad stuff. You gotta watch out for that. I would say most companies probably source it well to avoid that, but you can kind of never be sure, which is just a little scary, you know? It's scary to think that to save money, a company can just do whatever they want with no consequences. I'm just using like the lightest amount of powder because I do really like the dewy finish of this foundation, so I don't want to take away too much of that. So like I said, I'm just gonna use like literally the smallest amount of powder over top to keep that eye stuff from sliding around too much. So for my eyebrows today, I'm using the Pixie Natural Brow Duo. The jury's still out on whether Pixie is clean because it's marketed. Obviously, look at the color. Ooh, it's like green. And they use a lot of words like botanicals and natural, but it was kind of unclear if they actually use natural ingredients. It was kind of hard to find information on the brand other than to give you a natural look easily. Like they have a lot of duo products or products that help you get ready faster. It kind of just seemed like greenwashing, which greenwashing is when the company kind of markets themselves as green or ethical Ethical, but they're actually not. But when I did run the report, none of these ingredients raised any red flags, so I'm fine with this. There's no toxic ingredients. Just to give some backstory. And this isn't my favorite type of pencil. It's the really thick one. You can't see that, but um, I just, I prefer the thinner for a more defined line. I know a lot of people like the thicker because it's it's easier to fill in because it covers a larger surface area. It's not as precise and I don't necessarily enjoy that. I'm just using the edge of it to try to define a little bit more. It's actually quite a good color match. I tend to go light with my eyebrow products because I think it looks a little more natural. I just get really scared I'm gonna get sharpie brows because my eyebrows are dark. I obviously don't want that and so I tend to go lighter because I think that it looks a little less strong. Strong? You kind of get what I mean, right? <laughs> and as always, I'm brushing through my brows with a little eyeshadow brush to make them look a little bit more feathered and kind of blend. It's mostly to make sure there's no harsh lines because obviously you've drawn with the pencil. And then we're using the brow gel that's in this. This is actually pretty good brow gel. It does harden. <laughs> like it does really cement your brows in. So if you have like unruly brows, I, was, I would actually recommend this. I have pretty thin eyebrows and I just use it so they stay in place. So I like this, but I don't necessarily need this much power. <laughs> then I'm gonna use this bronzer. This is actually sold at Target now, which I think is pretty cool. I don't know if that's new. It's new to me and I'm the main character in my story. So like that's all that matters. But I thought that was really cool because you can just like pick it up locally instead of I've only seen these online like well people I mean like the brand actually I think it's an Ulta I just like I never gravitate towards this brand and it's actually EWG certified which just means that um it's been tested that there's no harsh ingredients this is actually quite dark but if you use it sparingly it's actually quite a nice bronzer it really like adds warmth and I'm actually gonna take some of this on my lower lash line 
All right, then I'm gonna use the Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray again. Ooh, I really gotta shake this up. This is really, really sparkly, so I'm only gonna use two pumps. I have to say, Cover FX has some of the most satisfying sprays. Like, can you see this? Oh, it really does a good job of dispersing the product. And I really like them. And I like the glow that this gives. Because this is definitely a glowy lip. For the lip, I wasn't sure if I wanted to use this Burt's Bees Crayon or the Burt's Bees Tinted Lip Balm. They're kind of darker than I wanted to go. Because obviously this is like a pretty neutral look. So I'm just going to put some on the back of my hand and like dab it on. Just for some color, but like nothing crazy. Because this color is almost like red. And I just... I feel like that would look cheap. It would look like I was an eight-year-old who got into my mother's makeup and of course went for the brightest shade of pink I could find, you know? Ooh, that actually makes my teeth look kind of white. Cool! For mascara, I'm using this Honest Beauty Extreme Length Mascara and Lash Primer. You have to use the primer and then like immediately the mascara because it looks really clumpy if you do primer, primer, mascara, mascara. You have to kind of do one eye at a time. And it's labeled, which is nice. So I probably should have curled my eyelashes, but I didn't. So this is what we're working with. And it's like an optical illusion, it's like this side. <laughs> it, it creeps me out every time. See the lift that gives? Like, damn. So that is it for the makeup. Thank you so much for watching, you're a real homie. If you liked this video, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. And comment down below any recommendations of clean beauty products, because I like to use that as an excuse to feed my makeup addiction, because it's like healthy makeup, you know? It's like eating a salad, kind of. I'll see you guys later, bye!